Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 15 of the video series where I critique and process your image. In this episode, we're taking a look at this image from George. It's our first wildlife shot, and it's a pretty cool shot. Uh, we got a snowy egret here, and yeah, I think we'll be able to process the entire thing in Lightroom, but we'll see as we go along. Now, as far as the camera settings, George used a full-frame Nikon D750 camera with this shot and it was a nikon well i'm not sure what type of lens but it, what brand lens but it was a 70 to 300 millimeter f4 to 5.6 lens at 85 millimeters now you had 300 millimeters available to you i'm not sure why you didn't zoom in more we have all this dead space here and that is actually one of the problems we have as wildlife photographers uh, lenses are really expensive, and when you get the bigger, bigger lenses, they're super expensive. Yeah, I mean, you get a Nikon 600mm um, lens, and it's the price of a car, you know? So it gets very expensive. But in this case, um, you shot at 85mm, all I would say is just zoom in. We could have really filled the frame with the subject. So we're going to crop, but we'd like to try to keep as many pixels on our subject as possible. And if you zoomed in, you got more pixels on the subject, that means you get more refined resolution of the bird's feathers and everything. All right, now we're at 1 1,000th of a second F4 and ISO 160, well, those are good settings. We Typically, you're gonna be wide open when you shoot wildlife photography. Um, you know, usually, you know, whatever the lens offers. I use a Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens. It's an f of 5.6 lens all through the zoom range, and I'm almost always at 5.6. There's very rare, well, I'll have to stop it down for some reason or another. If I'm doing multiple animals and I have animals that aren't in the same plane, one behind the other, then I might stop it down a little bit. Hopefully the light is there, though, because that's the problem we have when we have wildlife photography a lot. A lot of times the light isn't perfect. We're in little darker areas, and or there's movement, and you have to use a fast shutter speed. But in this case, F4 worked out great. Uh, George used a 1-1000 uh, shutter speed. Uh, ISO 160 is fine. It came out really nice. So, you know, as far as the only really thing I say is just zoom in more. Other than that, everything else is perfect. Now... All right, let's process it. What are we going to do? Well, first we'll jump out down to lens corrections and we'll enable the profile corrections. And I see here now the lens profile isn't coming up. Well, I don't know what lens he used. Uh, obviously, he knows, but I don't know. So if you know what lens you used, you could dial it in. Now, I know Nikon has an older lens that's a 70 to 300 and i know sigma has a 70 to 300 lens up four to 5.6 as a matter of fact i own that lens and then i think tamron too has a 70 to 300 f4 of f5.6 of that all would work on a nikon camera full frame camera so well i'm just going to make the assumption that um george used a nikon lens it's probably wrong he could have used one of the other two or maybe something else i'm not aware of so you could just go to the drop down and plug in nikon and it popped up with a nikon 105 millimeter lens that's obviously not what this is so we kind of have to search through this humongous list of lenses and look for the 70 to 300 and we have a nikon 1 70 to 300 i don't think that's it uh let's see here i'm probably there we go. Uh, here we go. An AF dash P. I don't know what a dash P lens is, but let's just put that one in there. Yeah, it brightened up the edges a little bit. Now that's probably the wrong lens because I don't know exactly what he used. But for the sake of argument, that's how you would go about doing it. Obviously, you'll know you know what lenses you own. So if this was a Sigma lens, you would just put in Sigma and then look for the right model. A lot of times, like um, a lot of times, Lightroom will find the correct model once you put the correct make in. In this case, it didn't. It came up with a 105 millimeter lens. All right, so we're just gonna run with this just uh, so we could complete this process. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is crop the image. Now, how do I wanna do this? Do I want a vertical? Now, I, as you know, I like to keep my three to two aspect ratio. Um, that's just me. Maybe you're not like that, but I think I wanna keep it horizontal. So I'm just going to pull down like this, and it's going to, since I have this padlock locked, it's keeping that aspect ratio. Now, what I think I want to do is I want the bird's eye along one of these lines, these rule of third lines. So I have it along this top 
horizontal rule of thirds line. And also, if you watched the last episode, I talked about if you have something with eyes in the shot, you'd like them to look into the larger part of the frame. So if I take this crop right now, you can see the back of the bird is closer to this side of the frame than the front of the bird is to the other side of the frame. So the bird is looking into the larger part of the frame. Now, just eyeballing it like this, I kind of like this, and I'm going to accept the crop. But sometimes when you accept the crop, it doesn't look right, and you have to come in and recrop. So we're just going to hit Enter, and I have it like that. Now, do I like that? Yeah, it's okay. I think we'll run with that. I would prefer, though, that we were zoomed in a little closer and we filled the frame with the shot right when you took it. Uh, if we start cropping away too many pixels, then it doesn't look right. Uh, the, the feathers won't look right, especially with wildlife photography. Fur and feathers just don't look right unless you have a lot of pixels on them. So you try to zoom in as much as possible and use as much len lens as you could afford, usually, to uh, process or to take these types of shots. But I kind of like this crop, so we're going to run with that. We're going to go to the basic panel now. And now it's a white bird, and I... and you got to be really careful when you process white feathers or white fur because you could it's real easy to just take away any detail in the fur or the feathers and it's actually kind of a fine line you run here um as a matter of fact bear with me here this image here i took uh yesterday and now this is a fully processed image and I was really messing with the whites and the highlights. Now I just used Lightroom to process this image and I really uh, pained myself as I was looking through here. When I initially processed it there was a ton of detail in this bird's feathers but it was really dark and dingy looking and I didn't like it. I wanted the white to be whiter because most of us have seen American bald eagles. Their heads are usually very, very snow white. So I, and mine was dingy gray. So I increased the whites, the white slider. And when I did that, I did lose a little detail up in here, especially, but that's kind of the trade-off I took to make this bird's head brighter and it looked better. So there's always these little trade-offs you're going to get. So sometimes you're going to sacrifice a little bit of the resolution because you want the luminance to look a certain way. But then other times you might sacrifice some of the brightness values, especially with white animals, because you want the detail to show through. These are all artistic decisions that you will make. So you know it's really up to you how you want to do it. There's not a right or wrong way. I chose to lose a tiny bit of the resolution up in the feathers here because I think the bird has a lot of detail otherwise and it gets away with it. So that's that. I just wanted to talk about that. All right, so what are we going to do about this bird? Well, it's kind of dark already and we could kind of come in here with exposure and bring exposure up. And as I bring exposure up, you can see right away how we start to lose some detail in the whites. And I really don't want to mess with exposure because we have a lot of background showing even after the crop. And I want that background dark. I want the bird to kind of jump out against the background. So I still want to try to preserve some detail though in the white feathers. So what I'm going to do is counterintuitive maybe. I'm going to bring the highlights down. You can see this bird's really dark now. And I'm going to open the shadows up. And it, it's actually not doing a ton. So I'm going to open the shadows up all the way. All right. Typically now, I will jump down to tone curve, but I'm going to add some vibrance, even though the bird's white. So we're adding some vibrance. I'm not going to add any saturation. I'm going to add some medium contrast that darkened down that background a lot. Now we're going to go back up to the basic panel. And I'm going to get that white point by holding in the shift key and double clicking on the word whites. And you can see now it made our bird much brighter, it made the background much brighter also. I'm going to do the same thing with blacks. I'm going to hold in the shift key, double click on blacks. And we brought that down marginally. Okay, so far now I'm liking it, except the bird isn't bright enough. I don't want to back, I don't want to brighten that background. As I mentioned, I could bring exposure up. I could bring highlights up. 
it's it's tricky I don't really like that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a brush so I'm just gonna get a brush and I'm gonna double click on effects or effect to reset it I'm gonna bring exposure up uh, so I don't know like half a stop but I'm gonna change that you know eventually we're gonna have feather all the way up uh, flow all the way up density all the way up and auto mask is not checked all right if you have auto mask checked you'll get little spotty look to it you know and I don't want that so we're gonna come in here and I'm just going to brighten the bird that kind of sounded weird didn't it all right um, just bear with me here I'm trying to go as carefully as possible while going quickly so you guys aren't falling asleep and still keep this kind of decent now of course if I wasn't talking to you guys I'd be it would take me about I wouldn't I'm not exaggerating it would probably take take me three times longer to do this okay so I kind of like that I'm, I'm staying away from these parts of the bird that are kind of really feathered out showing the background between it and I'm just getting the mainly the body of the bird um, itself and if I want to come in and get the beak a little bit I could brighten up that beak in the eye like that okay now see I'm getting this nice tonal value or difference between the bird and the background so the bird is jumping out more at, at us and I like that now I have it at 0.48 now we could experiment we could just bring it down a little bit or bring it up a little bit and just try to find a part where we you know somewhere where we like it um, again this is another creative decision that you get to make all right I like that I like that um, so far now I didn't do anything with um, with uh, clarity yet clarity might change it and we're gonna to have to come in and readjust that but we're gonna add some clarity now okay and it's actually affecting it seems to be affecting the background a little more so than the bird but we're gonna add quite a bit of clarity okay yes okay so far let me zoom in a little bit here we see some of this detail in here you can still see we still have a lot of subtle detail between the feathers that's when you know I didn't want to make it so bright that we lose that and the clarity helps um, keep that so we're not going to do anything with the HSL or anything we're just going to jump right down to detail now there is some noise there's not a ton he shot at ISO 160 and it was a full-frame camera that is um, a very good high ISO camera it's also a good just ISO camera it just you know does well so we're gonna pick a number I'm gonna jump right to 40 and that got rid of the noise totally that I could see no noise at all so um, let's bring it down to 30 again you you want to try to dial this in best possible because as I mentioned many times if you bring noise reduction up too high you're gonna start sacrificing some of the detail and why sacrifice detail if you don't want if you don't need to all right 30 there's a tiny bit of noise in the background just a tiny bit so we're gonna bring it at 35 now I'm gonna bring sharpening up to 50 and see what we're doing there or 50 ish all right um, bird looks great it added a little noise in the background let's mask out the background so we're gonna hold the alter option key and it's alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac and we're gonna move that masking slider to the right and we're gonna just sharpen those feathers where the white is okay that's good now wherever it was black it's not getting sharpened so we're gonna zoom in again okay now on the noise reduction sub tab of the detail tab there's a detail slider if I move that to the right it'll help increase detail into any of this finer detail areas like in these feathers so we'll move this to the right but it will tend to bring back a little bit of the noise so I don't really care about noise on the background I just don't want any noise on our on our uh, egret okay 
So I'm going to move that to the right. And I'm really not seeing much of an effect, to tell you the honest God truth. I suspect that's mainly because of the white bird. I notice uh, when I do this uh, detail slider on, let's say, a, um, a deer, you could see the detail come through on the brown fur of the deer and the reddish brown fur of some of the deers we have around here. So uh, that does seem to work more with darker, at least fur. At least that's my non-scientific finding. So we're, we'll keep detail at 60. Again, now I'm very concerned about the noise. I really don't want noise in this. Our goal here is someday to print this, and we want it to look really, really nice and clean. I think that's pretty good. There's no color noise. If there was color noise, you'd see little like red, green, and blue like dots. Sometimes you'll even get magenta and cyan dots, but we're, we look good there. Um, now, I'm going to add my uh, the vignette I typically add, um, not a light one, just a, a, like one like that. I don't want to encroach on the bird too much down in here. Okay, now, there's still something that I want to do. I'm going to get another brush, and I'm going to double-click on New, and just to make sure. When you open it, it's a new brush all the time, but just want to make sure. I'm going to keep exposure up. In this brush, you see, we did the one where we did the entire bird. This one, I just want to try the eye, like that. And you can just bring it up just a touch. Just Sometimes you make the eyes just a little brighter. It adds something. It adds a lot to the image, just slightly. And you can see I, I spilt over on, I guess, for lack of a better term, the bird's like eyelid. So we're going to turn auto off just for a minute. You can see if I zoom in a little. See how it's just a little brighter there, and I just really want the eyeball brighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the erase brush, take auto mask off, and I'm going to get a smaller brush. And actually, I'm going to take feathering on the erase all the way down, and I'm just going to erase this brush from his or her eyelid just want the eyeball bright. We'll go back to our real brush and we'll get that in there a little better. Okay, now we'll go back out and see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. I think that added that little touch just adds a little bit to the image. That eyeball, if you remember, is right on the upper third line of our rule of thirds, so it's a good point to look at. And I think our processing is done. Um, if you wanted to get really fussy with it, I guess, is you could get a graduated filter. You could double click on new. You could uh, reset it by double clicking on effect. Let's bring exposure down. And you could come in from the side like that and just darken it out that way, out of yonder, this way. Okay, that that I like. So that just brings it darker out here. And really, the brightest part, obviously, is going to be the white bird. The background isn't distracting. It's nice and blurred. Um, George did a great job blurring out that background. Um, I'd say we're done. Uh, we're done with the image. So I am going to, I'm going to get a... A virtual copy. I'm not going to send this to a plugin or anything like that. But what I am going to do is I am going to reset the virtual copy, but I'm going to then I'm going to match the crop. So I'm clicking on the first the image that we want to copy the settings from. Then I'm going to hold the command key in and click on that second image. If you have a PC, you'd hold the control key in key in. We're going to click sync and we have all these different things we could copy. I'm going to check none and I'm just going to click crop. I just want to copy the crop. So we're going to synchronize. All right, now we copied the crop to that image. So that way I could give you a more um, 
I guess, accurate or applicable before and after. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. If you want to see them side by side, you just, again, select them both. Then you could hit the C key on your keyboard, and then you could hit Shift-Tab, and then you have them uh, before on the right, after on the left. That's it. Thank you, George, for sharing this image. It's a really cool shot. Very well done. Um, I hope that helped you guys uh, processing something like this. White is tricky. Remember, there's a little trade-off there. If you make it a little bit too white, you're going to lose some of the detail. But sometimes you need to, like I did on that um, bald eagle shot. So that's it. Thank you again, George. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.